Is it going? Going. All right. Hey, everybody. Welcome to the studio. Thanks for joining me today. It's a little bit of a dreary day here in Portland, Oregon. So we're trying to cheer, cheer it up a little bit in the studio. Yeah, can you guys hear me? Can everybody hear me? Hope so. If you're getting good audio today, I'll just check in. Check and see if you can hear me. Okay, I have a couple of announcements today. Um, I have enabled Super Chat. So if you like, you can contribute to future events. Um, I hope you do. Um, helps us out and um, keeps, keeps, me, um, keeps me going. So that would be great, but no, no obligation. Also, just in um, shameless self-promotion, we have 19 more days of our sale of my new watercolor sketching workshop. $33 off, it's a really great price. It is a really great workshop. Everybody's having such a great time with it. It's super relaxed, fun. Um, the materials list is not overwhelming. The workshop itself is not intimidating. Anybody can dive in and do watercolor sketching, whether you consider yourself an amateur or a professional artist. It's super fun, meditative. Um, I'm, I'm having a great time with it. And from the looks of it, people are posting on our private Facebook group. If you um, purchase the, the workshop, you get an invite to a private Facebook group. And people are posting their color wheels and their projects, and it just looks so kind of um, happy and fun and easy and um, easygoing. So um, check that out. Um, you can um, visit my website paintinglessonswithmarla.com and you'll find the watercolor sketching workshop there. Um, I wanted to mention today that um, the streaming quality seems to be a little bit low. Um, it's a little um, jerky and I think that there's just a lot of people streaming. Also, you may want to refresh your, um, your uh, computer if the focus goes out on, um, especially when I'm working. So that might be helpful. The, um, we're in focus. It's, it's the streaming um, quality that's keeping the focus um, from being what it, might, what it might be. Okay, so get to talk about today's piece. I picked something really different to paint for you today. And can you yep. explain what Super Chat is real quick? Yeah, Super Chat is a way for you to donate um, to the um, live stream. I th it should show up there as that you can donate um, real time to, um, to us <laughs> for, to keep us doing new and um, better live streams. So um, today's piece, I'm going to paint this kind of um, interesting um, it's almost like an illustration. It's got some realism to it. I'm going to paint these objects. But the background, I have some different thoughts about the background. The background can be a, a, a little bit looser, um, more traditional kind of watercolor background. So what I actually did was I, I did a couple tests of the background. So I was thinking maybe something kind of on really loose and wild and colorful something maybe that was kind of northern lights like. Uh, but the, the, my concern with doing this is that I get the background, that I get the paper too wet. And I want to be able to um, um, move pretty quickly through the project for you guys. So what we're going to do is after I do the background, I'm not going to probably go quite this wild. Um, I'm going to let Kevin take the the page in and dry it for us. So we'll take a little break for that. And let me talk about this reference photo. So this is something I put together in Photoshop. These are objects that I have. So I have the little, little doll in the eggs. And obviously I don't have the hummingbird. Um, but uh, so I composed this all in Photoshop. And then what I did prior to um, today's live stream, I did my sketch and I transferred my sketch to the watercolor paper 
And then the other thing that I did today was I used this uh, masking fluid to mask off the objects so that I could put a wash in the background really easily and not have to um, worry about disturbing the drawing of my objects. So for new follow along people, I know there, there's a, a bunch of that you like to follow. It might be a little difficult today. You can give it a try, but I already did quite a bit of work. The other thing I did today is I'm not working in my sketchbook. I'm working on a watercolor block. So again, so I don't get, uh, so I can do a nice broad wash and not get quite the buckle that I might get um, in my sketchbook or even on a piece of paper. You can see on a couple of these, this paper, it's not super good watercolor paper and I was getting a lot of buckle. Uh, so this is the same paper that I'm using today. It has a pretty, um, um, hot, um, I'm sorry, cold press surface. It's kind of rough. So we'll see how much detail I can get in the little object. So it's always a kind of a, a push-pull what, what materials you're choosing to, to um, fit with the result that you want. Okay, but, so we'll see. We'll see what happens today. A little bit of an experiment. All right, the other thing that I may use today um, I might use a little bit of fluid acrylic. This is a big, big bottle of it. But this is um, golden high flow acrylics. It's fl fluid acrylics. This is stuff that you can use in an airbrush. Um, it's really thin. Um, I use this quite a lot for pastel underpaintings because it's really chromatic and it's really thin. So I might add a little bit of this stuff today also. So a few different kinds of things. So it's kind of fun to um, be mixing up the media just a little bit. But um, so that's, that's what I have in store today and we'll see how far I get. All right, I'm going to sit down and Kevin's going to move the camera for us and get a nice, nice close view for you. All right. So here's my, here's my masking fluid. In there, Kevin? Yeah, okay. Shot. Okay. I'll probably use some gouache at some point here too. The other thing that I will need at some point is I'm gonna need this um, rubber cement pickup. This picks up the masking fluid that I've put down, does it really, really well. So, and I've got my little reference material. Now, one, one thing I think about this reference material is, sure would be nice if my hummingbird had a red throat. So I'm gonna go ahead and probably give that a try too. All right, let me get my hair back out of the way. And can you talk about what, um, what brand of paper you're using? Um, gosh, what is this? I, um, you know, I'm not even really sure what the brand is. I can look and tell you later. And the other thing to, to notice is that I have two containers of water, and that's so that I can use one to clean out my brush brushes. I'm using a couple different brushes today and one to mix color with if I want to do that. And that's always a good idea to have a couple containers of water. So let's get started. I'm just gonna go ahead and wet my, wet my paper surface. I don't wanna use too much water. I'm just gonna get a nice, Also, um, mm -hmm. can you talk about how you transferred your image to the paper? Yeah, I just used the old school method. I did my drawing on tracing paper. And that's a really, I didn't trace this, but um, I did my drawing on tracing paper. And then that way I can um, go on the back side of the paper really easily. Um, with just graphite 
and did that old school method of transferring it. Rubbing, just rubbing it. So this is nice and wet, but not overly so. No, no, I didn't just totally flood the paper. So now I want to pick up a lot of pigment, right? And, you know, I'm thinking, you know, I want this to be dark. I like how these figures are really, really um, contrasting with the background. So I want a lot of pigment. And that's why I might, I might head to that fluid acrylic. Get some nice dark. This is Payne's gray. Oop. And this is definitely an experiment for me, too. So Let's see, I'm going to get some nice, intense color going. Get that kind of... So this is kind of the more abstract part of this. I'm thinking I want, right here at the horizon, something... Something like that. But this, this paper has quite a lot of texture to it, which is fine. Okay, now let's have some fun with this, this stuff. So I've got another little palette here, so I don't have to mix my... Um, my paint. See that? <laughs> That's crazy how how much pigment goes on there. It's really, really nuts. Okay. So how about? So now I have this other stuff. This is um, a cr uh, liquid acrylic as well. And it's, um, but it's this other thing that I think is really fun for this, you know, trying to get the Milky Way in there. We'll see what happens. Okay. Move this around just a little. It's pretty neat. Now, one other thing I want to do while I've got this wet like this is spray it a little bit because I'm, plant, I'm counting on some blooms. Now, this is the this is the time when we may need Kevin to go in and. I got the um, um, all set up. All right. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, we'll 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 lose we'll lose everything if we use it in here. 
Okay, I want a little bit more pigment in that sky, believe it or not. I'm going to really go for it. Just a little darker up in here. So we're going to have this contrast of this kind of abstract sky with the, these um, elements in the foreground. All right, that's pretty nuts. That's, that's nuts enough. I don't want to go any wilder than that, I don't think. Okay. All right. All right, Kevin, you're on. I think that's pretty cool. Pretty cool. I'll pull this off of here. And it's okay if it moves around a little bit okay. from the hair dryer. It's fine. Excellent. All right. Let's get out the So, yeah, see this is this is the vibe I was going for. I didn't want to go quite that nuts cuz I I I don't trust it to dry. So let's talk about my watercolor sketching workshop. So in the watercolor sketching workshop, um, some of you guys have seen these already, but um, this is one of my sketchbooks. Last year I spent quite a bit of time in Florence, Italy last year. So this is the kind of thing we're doing in the watercolor sketching. So it's not a purest watercolor, I would say. Um, it's definitely got a sketching component and a journaling component, which I absolutely love. And this is a little bit more involved. Some gouache in here. This is, was done plein air. This is my studio and garden, which is really super fun. And um, what else we have in here? More garden stuff. Just really nice and free flowing. And these are cool. Just practicing getting figures in really simply. And, um, and Venice. And everyday objects. I, I'm such a big fan of just plopping yourself down and painting whatever it is that's in front of you. Um, just training yourself to. to to see through those artist eyes. To me, it's really, um, this is a great time to be an artist. I'm really grateful for it. A little bit about perspective, aerial perspective, and how it relates to our painting. This is a fun page. A little color wheel right in the sketchbook. More objects. This was a study for the Still Life and Oil workshop that I um, finished earlier in uh, last year, late last year rather, and uh, I really find watercolor to be especially a great medium for doing studies, whether those studies are for um, large pastels, oils, acrylics, um, because it's so direct, the colors are really vibrant, and you can get something down really quickly and simply. So a little bit more. And these are fun. This is done plain air. And this is a little walk that I took in my neighborhood. And this white van was parked in front of this blossoming tree in the spring and just really struck me as incredibly beautiful. So wound up in the sketchbook. And more garden stuff. Lots of garden stuff. Here we go. Okay. All right. Good. I'm getting. All right, let's see what we got. What's it look like? It's pretty good. Oh. All right. Yeah, I'll buy that. Can you tell me? A little careful. That might have not dried all the way. Okay. All right. All right. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. I'll go along with this. I like it. Okay. Um, I'm, I might wind up with one more layer of dark, but I don't, you know, I don't think so. I think it's pretty neat. Um, this kind of thing, can you tell me, 
Kevin, do you need me to, is this? Oh, looks pretty good. Okay, all right, great. All right. So these kind of backgrounds, if you want that abstract background, you gotta be, <laughs> you gotta be a little um, brave. <laughs> all right, let's go ahead and um, remove some of this masking fluid. It should come off pretty easily. And the silver liquid acrylic yeah. has, is it ir iridescent? Yeah, it's got iridescence in it. Can you hold it right per there? It's pearlescent. Okay. Um, Dale or Rowney. Silver pearl is what it said. All right. That's pretty, you know, it's fun. I just can't resist playing, especially for something like this with that, that, um, um, Milky Way idea. Okay, so I'm gonna get this to come off. And because this paper is pretty textured, I might not get a, a, a super um, perfect edge, but that's okay. Right there, is that gonna come up? No, that's all right. Might get a little bit of bleeding because the, because the paper is pretty textural. That's pretty good. Get that. This um, totally reminds me of my illustration days when I was an illustrator back in the early, I guess mid to early, early to mid 80s. The prevailing style was really tight airbrush illustration. It was kind of pre-digital days. And so we would, uh, cut friskets with frisket paper and use this masking um, liquid as well. So that was, that was where I started. Super, super tight rendering using an airbrush and a triple ot brush. Super time consuming. So I sort of have an affinity for that kind of tight rendering. I still do. I'm gonna let that dry just a little bit more on the on this guy. Yeah, maybe it'll come up. Should I let that, is it wet there, Kevin? Um, on the... It's just the kind of, the acrylic, acrylic kind of created a little bit of a bubble. Okay. So it's probably wet underneath. Okay, that's okay. Is the table bouncing all around from me doing this? No? All right. Oh, look at that. That's so fun. It's the, the background, I feel like it could have been a little bit darker, but it's not bad. It's pretty, it's pretty good. I think it'll work. Can you just quickly um, talk, what is a frisket exactly? A frisket, frisket paper is doing the same thing as this liquid mask. It's, you put it down and you cut the shape that you want to um, reveal. So um, that's, what it, that's what it does. So it's doing the same thing at, at, as this um, liquid. This is liquid frisket and the other is just paper. It's doing the same thing. That's pretty good. All right. I think I can work with that. We've got a little residue of the frisket off of here. And now, to finish off the sky, I want to go in with gouache and get my stars. And I can, I can spatter a little bit but I think I also will go in with some bigger um, areas, maybe here in the Milky Way too. Okay, so the next thing I need is I need 
a little bit of a straight edge and I'm just going to use this because I, you know, just using what I got here in front of me, I'm going to use this piece of paper and I'm going to come along and get my, my edge here because the first thing I'm going to do is get that, those dark, mount, that mountain shape behind my little objects here. All right, that's not bad. And so I'm going to I'm going to put first the first thing I'm going to put down is the this kind of light blue for the where the snow is. Because I'm, then I'll come in around with a darker layer. So I'm going to clean this off. That makes sense. So I'll come in and get this first. I can so, come um, right up. When you put new color on, um, because we dried it off, that's preventing the bleed, correct? Yes, it's dry. Yeah, it's all dry now. So, so yeah. Acid, the new, tin acid, the new color will bleed into the background. No, because it's, it's pretty dry. And that's why you dry it? Yeah. Cool. One of the reasons I dried it. If if I hadn't if we hadn't dried it, then getting that first get off would have been you know problematic. Come in here, and I'm going a little fast. Now this. This hillside, um, do I want it behind this, this guy a little bit? I think so. I'll put it like so, because this is glass. Little, moving a little faster than I might if I was... A little bit of a steady hand required. Which do you prefer? Do you prefer tube watercolors or the pan watercolors? Well, you know, it depends. I, I, I sort of like the um, pans just because of the, uh, you know, just in terms of sketching. It's just kind of nice not to have to worry about the tubes, but the tubes are also good because they're you're, you're getting really... Um, fresh paint, chromatic paint that you don't have to work very hard to get get it kind of rolling. Um, but boy, those pans are really great for taking out plain air and just sitting down. I, I love the watercolor just for working in my house at night. Sometimes at night I don't like to um, come out to my studio. It's just, you know, sometimes I do, but I like to work kind of more um, quietly without as much uh, hassle with all the materials, I guess. So those pans are super nice for that. Okay, some, something like that. And, um, Go ahead. Uh, what brush are you using? Same this one? is, yeah, this is uh, this is a just all very all-purpose brush. It's a Utrecht number no. twelve Sabolette. So I'm going to go ahead with my um, eggs here and just get a kind of base color for them. Um, I love those that orange, kind of orangey red. And just in case people missed it, there's a question about how we dried the paint, the painting so fast. Oh, because I went inside and yeah, you went inside and did it. <laughs> With a hair dryer. With a hair dryer, yeah. Yes, oh, that's I need a great to. way. To do it. We just didn't want to do that on camera. So. Yeah, we didn't, yeah. I need to see if I can pick this up. It's going to. 
it's going to mess up my egg shape, but that's okay. Come around. So just to get a base, a base value in here, I'm just going to come in and just fill the whole shape with some color. Both of them. And this piece is, you know, it's just, it's kind of playful, fun. But just in terms of the, what the objects are, but a nice opportunity to practice some... <laughs> Some rendering. All right, we'll get those guys in there. That looks good. And how about something for this um, glass over here? Um, it's got a this kind of glow on this this side that's kind of nice and light. So I'm going to go ahead and put a layer of color in right here that. Um, will do that for me. Knowing that I'm going to put other transparent layers over the top of this. Just want to get a, some, a base for everything. And same thing on, on the bird. My, just kind of a middle kind of gray, I think, would be good just to start. I need to get something down. I like the idea of making him a red-throated hum hummingbird. Maybe add a little bit of this in there. Now the lighting situation in these objects is kind of all over the map. These, these three are pretty consistent, but this guy's got a different lighting situation, right? And ca can you make that work? Well, I mean, I'm going to try to sort of sort of make it work. That's the thing you have to be careful with in Photoshop. If, if you're doing that kind of composite stuff, if you want to make it 100% realistic. Really quick right. question. Yeah. There's, still a, there's still a Facebook group for the oil painters, right? Oh, yeah. Yeah. For if the Facebook group, some of them are for the paid um, workshops. So, um, a lot of the Facebook groups. Every paid workshop has a um, Facebook group associated with it. I have a, a, a public um, group that's dedicated to pastels. The other ones are private groups. So just getting a little color in for this guy. Just starting, just starting out. It's got a little bit of a hint of it here. And I'm almost at the point I'm going to go back into my mountain. Yeah, this is dry enough. I can go back into the mountains. Let me get this, this gal going here first. My little, my little, um, statuette. So that is my birthstone. Um, the little statue is a, she's holding onto a garnet and I've had this little statuette um, hanging around my um, my life since I was about 
I don't know, six years old, so it's pretty fun. Do you think the little silver blotch above the bird's head will be a compositional problem? Nope. Fair. I don't think anything's a problem. I always think everything that's going on is, is most, most everything is an opportunity. Because if I, if I thought of it as a problem, then all the, the, the thing that I did to, to, to make um, the background kind of a happy accidents, you like, you, if if you if you get all worried about that, then those things um, are almost impossible to to manage. So you, you know, yeah, I could go. Yeah, well, that's going to be that's going to be something, but um, yeah, it's not a problem. Right. I just want to get the shape of that in there. Just kind of get get it going. All right. And let's see, she's got that little hint of pink. I hadn't even thought about that, the, that, and I and I prob most of the time I don't. I just, I'm, I really just like everything that comes up. I'm just gonna handle it. And you just use make it work. Orange for the eggs, right? Um, I mixed something. I mixed a cad. Um, I mix, this was a, this is a, a um, what's it called? It's an orange hue with some cad red, I think I did. Whoops, that's not kind of what I wanted. All right. Now I'm going to get this background shape in and... I'm going to use some pretty. Dark, I'm going to use some Payne's gray and some um, dioxide purple for that. I want it pr pretty dark. I don't want it black, um, but I want it pretty dark. So these shapes back in here, and I'm not going to spend a ton of time. I might play with those shapes and get them a little bit. Um, Try to get them interesting, but I'm I'm, I'm just gonna kind of get a few things in, so we'll run out of time. But just kind of thinking about what is what is the character of them. And um, so we just finished watercolor sketching. Yeah. And now we're working on another one. Yeah, we are. We're working on um, watercolor sketching, garden journaling. So it's really focused on gardening. But all things garden, vegetable and flowers and garden tools and, uh, you know, all, all of what that... Um, has to offer, which is su super fun. I think we're even going to do a little fairy garden, which is really neat. Yeah, so there's only, I think, 19 days left in our sale of the watercolor sketching, so be sure it's really good price. I really wanted to make it so it's super affordable and really easy for people to do. 
Yeah. Scoot it over? Okay. All right. Get this to go back in here. This part, it's just kind of, it's very, um, to me, very illustration oriented and just reminds me of back in the day. Oh, it's coming together. Now, once I get this in, I'll do the little foreground shape. So that once I do that, I'll have a lot better idea of the values and their relationships. I think it's pretty good. Um, this brush, it's a pretty big brush, right? But boy, it can get in there and do all kinds of things for you. You don't need a ton of brushes. And to me, it's better to use as big a brush as you can um, rather than go, go smaller. I would go as big as you, can, as, as you can stand to go. Okay, I want to get something in for this ground. Now, this photo... It's kind of a brown, um, and I don't want it to be as bright as this, but I'm not sure I want it that brown. Let's see. Um, what can I? What can I get? That's pretty close to what that is. This is um, burnt sienna, and my mixture of. Um, purple. Maybe I'll add just a little more purple. Give it a little bit more chroma. And we'll see how that, that's pretty close to what that is. Well, um, how about, how about if I start with something a little brighter underneath? And give it, give it an opportunity to then I can come back over this with another layer if I need to that's a little less um, saturated. And get that ellipse. So I think it's fair to say that this is kind of a surrealist piece. Would you agree? Yeah, bit? yeah, oh yeah, oh yeah, definitely. Sure. Yeah. And we call the video Magical Realism. Just, that's just the title of the video. Yeah. But um, maybe it's the title of the piece too. I don't know. Um, I think I'm going to come along and get this underneath the cast shadow. When I'm when you know my mom my mom watches these. <laughs> it's the only time she gets to see me now. But um, she's, she's like, well, I'm not sure that these are that interesting objects. And I'm, I was like, wow, I think they're really interesting to paint. But, um, you know, everybody's got their own what, what's interesting to paint. Everyone's got a different idea of what that is. My mom doesn't paint, but she sure knows... Um, a lot about it because she watches me for years and years. She knows what she likes too. I think most people do. Denise says that she loves that checkered shirt that you always wear. <laughs> um, well, there's a funny story. There's a backstory to the checkered shirt that just came up. Should we say it, Kevin? Oh yeah, so, absolutely. Okay, so, no, don't forget to repeat the question. Yeah. So, um, Denise loves my checkered shirt. My well, there's a lot. There's a, of course, there's a backstory to everything, isn't there? But um, so this shirt 
I've had for, um, well, actually I've had this one for a day, but I, I really like the shirt too, and it's really comfortable, and, it, and, and it's kind of bright and cheery, and it's, it's just, it's linen. It's a nice shirt, right? And, but my shirt, um, the, I, it's linen, so it wore, and I wore holes in the elbows, both elbows. I'm like, oh shoot, that's too bad. I'm not going to be able to, you know, hang with that forever. And so I went online, I went on eBay. Kevin didn't think I'd be able to find it, but I went on there and I found one. I found another one, my size. And it came yesterday, so this is the new one. <laughs> it's really funny. All right, so just going back in through these shapes. Now, now there isn't that much contrast here. But that's okay because I'm going to come in with another layer. That's the th great thing about watercolor is you're, you're building the hues and value with the transparent layers. And you're just building up the density. When you build up the density of the paint layers, you're darkening the value because you're relying on the density of the paint and also the sparkling white of the paper to do a lot of work for you. So right now, this is really similar, but I'm going to come back over this um, ground with um, another layer. I could get the girl's hair in. Get and start to get some of the other, these other little details that underneath side of the fe tail feathers. I'm, you know, if I had Days and days, I would take a little bit more time for some of these kinds of things, but I want to get a little further along here. Very, yeah, slightly. Not much. Um, the question was whether my drawing board was tilted upwards, and yes, it is a little slightly. Not a lot. Now I'm just going a little faster. How much time have we? Have we? Oh, we've been going for 48 minutes. Okay. So what I want to do, I want to start getting some of these cast shadows in so that I can get um, a little bit more. Sense of it. Yeah, let's see what else we need to do. We need to get these, uh, the core sh shadow in the eggs a little bit stronger. That's really fun. Soften that up. It's 
this one. This egg is at a weird angle to me. It's got, there's a little hint of blue. These guys. I want to get this kind of idea of cast shadow under here. Now, I have, I have the idea that I'm going to put some pen line I'm going to have an idea that this is like that. I'm also going to have an idea that this has a reflection coming down. Are you using a rag or paper towel to blot? The, um, the question is, am I using a rag or a paper towel? I'm using a paper towel. And, but it's a Viva paper towel. <laughs> so, it's special. Get that cast shadow. Here we go. It starts to come together. Soften that cast shadow. I don't know whether that's right, but I think it's close. And I want my little something like that. Now, this guy, well, I, I definitely like to bite off more than I can chew in these live streams, don't I, Kevin? I'm pretty. So, yeah. <laughs> it's, just, it's my thing. I want to do it. I just want to. Make can you talk a little more about the reference photo, um, about how you made it in Photoshop and stuff? Yeah. So um, I took the photos, except for, obviously, except for the photo of the hummingbird, which 
Um, I have a friend who is a um, wildlife photographer who um, sent me, he, he's very generous and he sends me um, a lot of photos and so everything else, I took the photos of the objects um, and um, then um, brought them into Photoshop and um, masked them, um, which is something um, I am learning to do. And then um, after masking them, able to size them and um, play with them, kind of manipulate them, and um, just, you know, just being really playful and coming up with some different ideas of, you know, how to, how to arrange the objects and what would be fun to paint. I, I do that with the object. The idea that I'm going to paint them, not, not that I'm going to um, make digital art. I'm not really interested in that. I'm, I guess I'm a traditionalist in that way. I, 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 I'm not really interested in um, making digital art. So I've got a little bleed here, but that's no big deal. I can come um, back are along. Are you um, leaving some of the edges and the shadows soft and some of them hard? Oh, I just haven't gotten around to all of it. You know, I can come along and soften. Also, some of the edges, so the edges you want, the edges harder when they're closer to the object as, as the shadow um, um, recede, uh, um, it goes further away from the object. You probably do want it, them to soften up a little bit, diminish. So that's one thing. Getting a little bleed there, a little bit more than I want. Okay, so now let's see. I want to get this guy a little darker here. And I, a couple more things I want to do. I want to come over my... Actually, what I want to do is come over the whole thing. Now that'll work. I want everything to just sit back there a little bit more. So just one more layer. It's a great thing about watercolor. A uh, quick question. Yeah. Um, is it easier to work with the unintentional blooms or to remove them? Um, I mean, I, I guess it really depends on, you know, how, how you feel about it. Like, I, I don't... I don't feel like there's anything about what's there that's, you know, ultimately is a problem. You know, there's sometimes you might you might get rid of them, but guess what? So what what I what I have in mind now is another layer, another layer here, and another layer here. Um, and so let me, let me just go ahead and try that because I think I'm at that point. Because now what I have left to do is just some detail on this. If I want to do any, I, th I think I want to do sketching. And then I have um, the, the stars. So let's see. I have in mind to come along the sky with a layer that's kind of um, viridian and um, Payne's gray. So I need a lot of pigment. So that's the thing about watercolor, and it's so great. So that's going to resist. That's all right. But it'll set back there a little bit. This guy will pop out.
Yeah, see, that's nice. It's the only time I've really used the bigger brush. Yeah, see, that just sets the whole thing back just enough. Cool. A little bit more pigment. this to set back there. How often are you rinsing your brush out? Um, in between, definitely in between um, any um, shift in color, hue, or value that is significant. And that bigger brush, what's the number on that one? This is an old brush. I can't even see. See, this one's the same size. These are old brushes from my art school days. Um, so they're like 30 years old. So I, it, you know. <laughs> and the, uh, the, the brush you're currently using is a watercolor brush. It is a watercolor brush. It's a big flat. Basically. Yeah, big. That's really nice. I'm just going to come over this as well with the, that Viridian mix. Get everything to set back. More like the photo because the photo has that, you know, stark difference. Still not quite as much value difference. Now I want this ground plane also. I think I do want it more, I want it a little darker and a little more purple. So a nice wash on it as well. And that's where that, the, those transparent layers just work out so well because that intensity of color underneath is helpful, but I didn't want it quite as bright. My eggs aren't perfect. this in between here. All right. Okay, now what's next? I think it would be fun right now to go ahead. There's a couple things I would like to do. I think it would be fun to go ahead and get some stars in just to show you how I would go about doing that. And then um, maybe some sketching, some line. And let's see, that's gonna, I gotta let that dry. I'll go do some line first before I do the stars because that's gotta dry a little bit more. Okay. So let's get some line on this guy, this, this lady here. So now here's where it really becomes a, a sketch and m more mixed, a mixed media thing rather than this kind of serious painting. And I really like that idea. So now she's got a little design on her. It's 
the little flowers on here. I can look at right at her because she's right here. There's her hand. That's so awesome. And what kind of pen is that? This is this pen is a just a, it's a big pen. <laughs> <laughs> a big fine point pen. That is it. Nothing couldn't be simpler. I also love that about it. That's kind of cool. That's a felt Thanks. Pen. Yes, it is. It's not a ballpoint. It's a felt. Yeah, it's a felt tip. Come around these eggs. Kind of a little broken line around the eggs. And come around this. These guys. It's pretty wet, so I've got to come over here. Watch those ellipses a little bit. Be fun to get a little bit of the character of the. This guy. Here's a question. Mm -hmm. um, it, said, it says, um, is the super chat is the super chat button the only way to donate for future uh, live streams? Yes, right now, yeah. You can always uh, buy a workshop. That's, that's right. That's a good way to go. <laughs> yep. Get, this is fun to get the little
Yeah, that's fun. Um, we'll zoom in. Yeah. Uh, we'll zoom in and do some close ups at the end so you guys yeah. can see the details a little better. Um, yeah, I, I just have too much fun. <laughs> no, the thing about drawing and painting is it's, it's, you always can amuse yourself. All right, I think that's enough of that. Let, I want to try to get um, some um, gouache in here. I, I want to put a little bit of um, highlights on, and I want to put some stars in. And then... <laughs> Is there a benefit to doing your pen work last? Um, you know, some people could, you could do it before, for sure, you could, yeah, you could do that. Um, but I, I like doing it last. I feel like it f finishes stuff up, um, but um, that's just me, the perf personal preference. You could also spatter for getting these stars, too, but I don't, you know, I'm not sure I want to do that at this point right now. I want to try to get some bigger, some small ones. You know, you could think about the, the little groupings of stars and Got to spend some time on this. <laughs> That's pretty crazy, but I'm not going to do them all. Um, I'm going to get my egg. Just get some little highlights in for her. That's really fun. And uh, little I might I might try to get a little bit more color on him That little, that's fun. It's got a little hint there too. But, okay, what else would I want to do? I think some of this could be darker. Could go back in and get an even another layer down in here. really set that back. See that's neat. How how much time have we used? <laughs> We've been really gone over probably. We're just at about seventy four minutes. Oh okay. That's not too bad. No, okay. Oh you're moving pretty quick given the detail and everything. Oh yeah. It's 
that's not too bad. Oh, I thought it was way over that. Okay. So this is just a matter of just going back over and getting the layers to get the darker value that I want. And the white is just gouache. The white is gouache. I like gouache. You know, when, uh, you know, again, this is not, you know, purest watercolor where it's sketching. And, uh, you know, I feel like gouache is really a fun thing to add. Some watercolors would say, no, <laughs> no, you can't. But even when it came to when it comes to pastel, I'm not I'm I'm well, I'm not a purist. To me it's like whatever whatever works. Yeah, that's fun. A couple of things. I I went over here. This egg, the shape of the, this egg is kind of important. I um, went over with the background there, so that's a little too bad. But if I worked on it, I could probably fix it. But I'm not not going to right now. Get a little bit darker on these cast shadows. One comment is that they love how everything is fun and um, how you don't seem to worry about anything. Oh, yeah. <laughs> yeah. Um, partly it's so well planned out that you're able to sort of... Yeah, have I, time. I have planned it out. Um, but I do, um, you know, very much feel like we're... Um, so, um, you know, I feel blessed. I'm blessed to be painting and um, that it's it is fun it's supposed to be fun <laughs> um, I get to sit here in a beautiful space and paint for you guys and I, I don't take that for granted believe me that, that this is the I don't take it for granted and so I don't feel like I have any room to be anything but um, happy about it and lucky about it and um, that this is this is fun <laughs> it is fun and um, yeah it's good it's a really good thing and I'm happy to that I get to share it Let's see, what else could we do here? Um, I think this could get a little more like that. And, yeah, everything about it's fun. The watercolor sketching, um, workshop I, I designed it particularly with that in mind that that 
it shouldn't be, you know, a burden or something heavy duty that, you know, you can plop yourself down and paint and draw and, and do something, you know, like this. How fun is that? It's, it's great. Put some objects. These are just things I had together, you know, I had in my house. These are just things sitting around. Of course, the hummingbird, no, not so much. That's thanks to Paul. <laughs> but I do have hummingbirds come to my feeders in my yard, and I love them. I'm so fascinated by them. They're so amazing. They're so beautiful that um, I, I just really love to look at them. So. I think that um, when it comes to art, um, that there's a, a, a too, I, I see my students get a little too um, hung up on the thinking of the thinking of it, and not not enough on the just painting. Just you know, let a lot lot more painting and a lot less thinking, a lot less perseverating about you know, all the, all the details and all that goes into it. Because I think that when you spend too much time thinking, you, you stop, you actually stop the painting. So one quick question about the watercolor workshop. Mm -hmm. um, so you can do the watercolor workshop whenever you'd like. It's a video workshop. Yes. So it's not a live workshop. No, no, no. It's a, it's a video. It's, uh, yeah, it's, it's, yeah, it's online. It's a video works. You buy you you buy it, and you can follow along at your own pace, at your own um, whenever. Yeah, it's not it's not live. There is a Facebook group though. The Facebook group is a way to connect with other people that are doing it. So it's pretty active. It's pretty amazing. People are really getting into it. So you you get to interact with other people, other artists. Yours forever. Yeah. The the those videos are. Um, I have online lessons. We sell um, um, monthly lessons, and those are only available to you um, as long as you're subscribed. But they're they're really um, amazing. We're working really hard on year two, and it's a ton. It's just so many hours and hours of video and lessons. And we have lessons in pastel and oil and now watercolor. So it's really fun. So th this would take a lot of time to like finish out those stars, but yeah, I think it'd be worth it. I think they look neat. So just taking some time to finish out those stars. I'm gonna mess up the gouache here in the gal. Okay, I think that that's about it on this one for today. You want to get in a close-up yeah, shot? Close it definitely has an um, a illustration look to it. Do you want to maybe hold mm -hmm. it up, Marlon? We could take up. Yeah, a bit. yeah, sure. Just point it right at the camera here. Yeah, well, let me get it. So, yeah, it's kind of fun. Yeah, that shimmering, it's pretty. Um, Here, just point it right at the camera. Right there. Take right. Look. right there. Okay. Yeah, it's fun. Yeah, yep. I know it's I'll zoom in on the uh, each part mm -hmm. here. Yep. Definitely, you know, some mixed media here, this one today. So we used some watercolor. We used these fluid acrylics. Um, I use this, um, this stuff, liquid acrylic pearlescence. Oh, and I also use the masking fluid. 
And what else? A gouache. A little bit of gouache. Windsor Newton gouache. And Windsor Newton watercolors. Yeah. <laughs> And that, that was a lot to, to do today. So we'll be doing some, um, yep, okay, great. Well, thanks for watching, you guys. Um, we'll be doing more live streams. We'll be doing some um, pastel live streams, too. Um, no, never fear. I know that some of you guys are um, pastel fans, so we'll be doing that, too. Really appreciate you watching, and um, I hope you visit the website, paintinglessonswithmarla.com, and check out the watercolor sketching workshop and all the other stuff that I've got going on there. And I um, hope you're well and staying really creative, and just have fun with it, and just dive in and, you know, don't take it quite so seriously. Okay, see you guys soon. Bye.